Congressman, are we living in a bizarro world? What is going on? Well, we're in bizarro land, that's for sure. I mean, uh, if you talk truth and data, uh, they, they label you a science denier. If you go with uh, cherry-picked numbers that uh, support a political agenda, then they say you're some kind of scientific whiz. Uh, you know, Dr. Fauci's posing by a pool and sunglasses now, talking about how effective he is. He's been effective in shutting down a country, destroying an economy, uh, and engendering uh, panic and hysteria. So I guess he has been effective. But, I mean, this notion that you should shut down schools when other nations are, are showing that you can open schools uh, very safely and you look at the data, uh, you, I mean, you, you are really uh, talking through your hat here. I mean, this is, this is the problem that we're, that we're seeing. And uh, schools, uh, these kids are not super spreaders. I mean, the data is out there. The science is out there. And there are doctors that are saying this, experts that are saying this. But it doesn't fit the narrative that the, that that some folks want. So it's all about narratives today. It's not about truth. Oh, yeah, and, and that's what is. I mean, I had uh, Congressman, I had the Pima County Superintendent of Schools on Dustin Williams two days ago, and I said, "People are mad. Parents are mad. What scientific evidence do you have that there should be no in-class schooling?" And he couldn't. He couldn't come up with anything. Not one thing. And when I told him that 0.03 percent is the death rate for people under 15 for the virus. He said, well, that you, you can't risk that. I said, you have a better chance of drowning in a pool. We're going to get rid of pools. They have literally nothing. This is insane. And now there's rumors that Doug Ducey might actually push the start date back, start date back for in-class in learning even further. Yeah, that's, that's really concerning to me. I mean, uh, the day, like, like you said, Garrett, I mean, the data is really clear. This, uh, for kids uh, under age 20, and particularly for under age 15, the, the case fatality rate worldwide and, and in Arizona is so, it's, it's almost statistically insignificant. It's so low. And, uh, and they say, well, there's, we, we don't want teachers to go and they'll catch it from the kids. Uh, they'll, get, they'll take it home to their grandparents or whatever. Uh, the data is out there. The science is out there. For whatever reason, kids are not super spreaders. They were saying, oh, they're super spreaders. They, they no longer can even say that because... Uh, the, the science and data out there undermines that. And th so why would, you, why would you shut down schools? Why, why would you? I mean, other than the fact that so many uh, uh, teachers want to indoctrinate their kids to the left, that, that might be a, way, a reason to think about it. But, but look, people, parents want their kids to be educated. They don't want them to fall further behind. The, the Pediatrics Association said, look, guess what? We've already found that there's damage to kids when you took them out of school, there's more damage to kids outside of school. Now, they backed up on it because uh, the teachers' unions got to them, um, and they said, well, you know, we just want to be super safe. Yeah, it, it, the data shows it's super safe. It's super safe. Congressman Andy Biggs is on KNST AM 790. Do you think, because, you know, if they push this date back again, you know, it's going to get close to when the election is. Do, do you think that this yeah. is all being done to crush the economy? So they can try to blame Trump, and that would be the reason why people might vote against him. Well, I think since since the folks that are driving uh, this are unions, um, I'm always suspect as to what their motivations may be. So the teachers' unions are saying, "Look, you know, we want more money, but we don't want to have to go teach in schools for it." I mean, heavens to Murgatroyd. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you look at it and say, if the data is indicating to you that it's safe to open schools, but you don't want to, and you're the teachers' unions, and you hate Donald Trump and anything that's conservative in this country, uh, yeah, I think you could, it's, a, it's a conclusion you could probably reasonably draw. Uh, and, and this is what's frightening here. And then, you know, we have a governor that is just uh, being led around by his nose for this. And I say, you know, what we don't know, and I know you don't know, we don't know what is, um, what is driving him to do this. But, I mean... If you could even reach out to him, do you think he'd even talk to you about this whole situation and listen to your sound advice? No. <laughs> no. I have, I have offered advice uh, in the past. It's, uh, it's been uh, received and um, gone unheeded. I, 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 I'm, I'm used to that. I mean, 
Uh, Garrett, I just went through numbers again. This I go every every day. I go through the numbers in Arizona that are reported. Um, I go through national data, and um, I go through other states. And I was in Utah. Uh, had to be in Utah last weekend, and so I said, pulled up their numbers and looked. They're panicking over there, and then their numbers do not support the panic and hysteria in Utah, and nor nor does it support it here in Arizona. Um, and and you know what? You can offer advice, and and people people can take it or reject it. It's their prerogative, but it's not good for the state. The policies that they're being implemented here, I think, are are draconian, and unduly draconian, and um, and it's going to impact our economy. And if you keep schools closed, it's going to impact our economy. I think somebody said uh, uh, yesterday there was a report out that I saw that I think the number is like fifty billion dollars a month every month that schools are closed, uh, negative to the economy. Wow. This, this is incredible. And now there's a story out that he, the, the do, of course, Ducey doesn't say it. His little spokesperson, uh, whatever, Patrick Petak, his handler, says that uh, we anticipate, uh, you know, uh, basic limitations in life throughout the rest of the year, masks the rest of the year, um, all that stuff. We'll get to masks in just a second, but let's go to the numbers. Because I'm, I, I saw you on Fox Business, and I'm glad you brought up the death certificate matching, where uh, the, the state yeah. is going back weeks and months and trying to find, because, you, you, you know, this makes no sense to me. They're going back weeks and months to find death certificates that have any kind of COVID-related symptoms. And if there's two or more minor symptoms, they're adding COVID as the reason of death. I'm assuming they're doing right. it, one, to jack up the numbers, two, to get more money uh, from, uh, from the CARES Act and from Medicare. But I'm just wondering... I'm looking now at the, at the, at the uh, Department of Health website. It says that we have a 12% per total per, uh, percent positive, right? 12% positive testing rate. So only people that have symptoms can get tested. 88% of those people that have the symptoms are negative. What justification do they possibly have to say that, well, if you had symptoms and you're now dead and we can't test you, we're going to declare you positive anyway? Yeah, th this is all about money, Garrett. I mean, that's... That's the the ugly secret about this is that the perverse incentives that were in the CARES Act um, include, I think the bump is 20% if it's a COVID-related death in, in Medicare, uh, excuse me, Medicaid reimbursement. So you get more money if, it, if it's a COVID-related death. So they bump up that number, not just here, but throughout the country. I mean, you, you saw, I don't know if you saw the scandal in Florida where you had, I don't know how many uh, hundreds of testing facilities that were coming back with 100% of the people or 99% of the people that came in for a test were testing positive. Well, that, that's, a, that's a statistically impossible number. And, and so why, why were they doing it? There's money tied to all of this stuff. That's, that's why. And um, those perverse incentives uh, for that, uh, perverse incentives to, to keep from going back to work, uh, you know, that people respond to incentives. So that's the motivations, at least in my opinion. Uh, but when you start looking at numbers, again, you've had, just, just think of it this way. You've had 65,000, over 65,000 uh, cases in the 20 to 44 age bracket. You've had 143 um, par Paris who died. That is below an average flu rate season. That's below that for that age group. Um, you know where the vulnerabilities are. The most, if, here's the thing. Think of it this way. When they tell you we know who the most vulnerable are, well, if you have a category that's most vulnerable, what that means is you also have a category that's least vulnerable. I mean, that's just a corollary, right? And the least vulnerable category here is kids under age 15. They are they're the least vulnerable. They don't transmit the disease. They don't seem to get the disease. When they get the disease, it's, it's, it's a kid, uh, a child who has some uh, more comorbidities uh, already that are more likely to succumb. I mean, that you, you have to face the facts. And when you said you're more likely to drown in the pool, um, you're probably more likely to get struck by lightning um, than, than to perish if you're a kid under 15 uh, from the COVID. That's just, that's just the way it is. I mean, uh, we could talk Texas Congress, yeah. numbers. Texas numbers, yeah. gosh, I'm just telling you, Garrett, Texas numbers indicate that the influenza uh, seasons, the last two influenza seasons, exceed uh, the COVID uh, case fatality rate in Texas. It, it doesn't seem to matter. It doesn't seem to matter.
Well, how, how come, Congressman? I know you can't read other people's minds, but you're like one of the rare people that's out there fighting the fight and getting the information out. And other Republicans are just sitting back doing nothing. And I know you have a good relationship at the White House with President Trump and Vice President Pence. Vice President, I mean, are, are they aware of the things that you just said? Yeah, you know, look, I talked to administration officials uh, late last week and over the weekend uh, relate, relating this information. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, for, for whatever reason, Fauci's got uh, an enormous uh, amount of uh, swack out there and uh, uh, they're out there. But I, I do not fully understand the motivations from not just having a real candid conversation with the American people, throwing out numbers in our state. We should be doing that in our state. We, I mean, none of the data that I get for Arizona comes from anywhere else except from the, what the state's own data is. And uh, I will tell you, Garrett, what I've seen in the last couple days, though, is a number of, a number of uh, articles that have come out in the media where they talk about, well, you know, you, could, you have to put this in context. That's the first I've seen it in months where they say you have to put this in context. Um, uh, because that all these numbers that you see, the hysteric numbers that you see, where they say, "Oh man, the, the case the case rates out of uh, really skyrocketed." Well, of course it's skyrocketed, um, but that's you have uh, additional testing. The question do you have to say is, what's happened to that hospitalization rate? What's happened to the case fatality rate? Both have been dropping like a stone, and yes. um, <laughs> it, I, I can't explain why. But we have to have these candid discussions with the American people. And can we have investigations to hospitals? I keep finding out more and more people telling me stories. Because here in Arizona, I don't know if this is Ducey's fault or Kara Christ's fault, but we can't get any results. Uh, I mean, I know, I know a guy who actually felt like garbage. He got a COVID test. And it took him, and he goes, I went home and I felt like I was going to die. I almost died. He goes, because no doctors would see me. I got the COVID test. I had to wait 12 days. Is a friend of mine. He waited 12 days to get the yeah. results. And when yeah, he finally got the results, then he was able to get the, uh, the yeah. Z-Pack and, 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 and the zinc. And, and this, is not, this is not the only, uh, only guy, by the way. Really quick, I got another one sent to me. A, a business owner here in town said one of my employees went to the emergency room. She was having difficulty breathing. They determined she had heart issues. She was given a rapid COVID test. It was negative. They told her she could not leave the hospital until other COVID tests came back. She felt great after the first day. When they dealt with the heart issues, the doctors and nurses said, we think you have COVID. They wouldn't let her leave until the next test came back. It took six days. She spent six days in the hospital, and then it was negative again. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean I'm hearing all kinds of anecdotes like that. I mean, these things happen, and, and you hear them, and you go, why is it? Um, they're concerned about liability. I'll give them that. Uh, that's a legitimate concern because if somebody gets out soon, oh, man, they're going to come back and sue us. That liability is a real issue, but the, but the other issues you got to track the money, um, and and so that's why Garrett, I introduced legislation over two months ago, I think, uh, uh, now that that dealt with liability issues because I could see this is going to be a problem. This is the problem you have to face, and and I looked at it, so I introduced it, and um, it's just been sitting there. Of course, Pelosi is not going to move my bill, uh, um, and McConnell is going to give up. Uh, an additional a couple of trillion dollars in national debt in order to get a liability pr protection bill, and it'll be weak sauce. I mean, you need to have a, a solid liability protection uh, out there. And and um, the, this, I, I'm just sorry, but I hate to say this. It's, it's cynical, but I'm afraid politics and money have really taken over uh, this uh, this uh, situation we're in. And, and, you know, and then maybe it's the election. Maybe the president is afraid to do something because... Like, I don't trust those poll numbers one bit. I mean, I've seen where Biden has an 11-point lead in the NBC Wall Street Journal poll, but they weighted it. It was D plus 12 in, uh, in, in, yeah. in the actual poll itself. So it's like, come on, give me, give me a break. Um, do you think with the president uh, demoting Brad Parscale, I mean, I think he's a business guy. Something's not working, you move it out. I still think people are on his side. Do you think that that's a, that's a sign of danger and they need to kind of just refocus? Um, you know, when you, when you move Brad up, Brad, Brad's in, uh, strength was social um, media data. And so um, I'm not sure his strength was messaging anywhere else. And so he's brought in somebody, I think, and I, and I forget his name, I, but I know him. And I, I think yeah. he's a little bit stronger on messaging, that type of thing. So I think it's, I think it's a, a, a view at maybe 
uh, maybe Brad was strong in one area and not in another. So that's, okay. that's the way I'm looking at it. But I, I, I don't think it's a, it's a panic move. I think it's just that, well, we gotta we gotta shore up over here. We 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 need a strength a strong position over here. Okay. And last one, I really appreciate it, Congressman. I just want to go back, and I'm not trying to get you into trouble or have you say something you shouldn't say at all. But the fact, I mean, it worries me, not just as a talk show host, but as a constituent and, a, and an Arizona resident, that the governor of Arizona will not even will not even talk to you, not even take your phone call, not even discuss, get another point of view about this entire situation when it's our freedoms and it's our kids in school and being educated. They just won't even let you even talk to this guy? Yeah, I, look, I'll just say this, because uh, I want to say this delicately, but, but truthfully, too. Um, what I've chosen to do, because uh, I think it needs, on the national level, I have uh, some some issues as well, because, I, I mean, people are still trusting Fauci, and I just don't see how he's proven to be right. He's been wrong on everything. Um, I'm, I'm putting on town halls. So last week, uh, Freedom Caucus, uh, that I, I helped uh, organize this, a town hall on why you should open schools and how you can open schools. And, and I'll just tell you, that's where I'm going. I'm trying to get to go directly to the public as much as possible. I don't have a great bully pulpit. The president does, the governor does. But I, I've got to get out directly to the, to the people as much as possible. Uh, that's why I'm grateful to be on your show, because somebody's got to be out there saying this stuff. And, um, you know, you go to my website. I tell people to go to bigs.house.gov, go to my Facebook page, et cetera. You'll see that town hall from last week where I brought in six doctors, experts from around the country to talk about, um, how you can, uh, why you should be able to open up and how important it is to open up schools and um, how low the risk is. And that's the question. Gary, what's happening is people are talking about safety versus, um, you know, uh, whatever the opposite that they, can, they view it as. And the bottom line is you should be talking about risk, how risky. Everything we do in life is risk. I, it, it's a risk when I eat an apple that I'm going to, on a choke on my apple or something like that. Everything you do has a risk. The question is, is it an acceptable risk? And we make that choice um, a thousand times a day, whether something's an acceptable risk. And when you look at the data, the science behind this, you talk to people who are experts, not, not people with an ax to grind, but people who uh, are experts and study this stuff, they will tell you it is an acceptable risk. The risk is almost non-existent to open up schools and that we should be opening up schools. That's the point. We should be talking about the risk factor and the risk is so minimal uh, and, and the risk of keeping kids out of school outweighs the risk of kids going back to school. That's the bottom line. Man, and, and yet uh, the governor, and I, we, look, we all appreciate you fighting and, and put it out there because not enough people are. Uh, I mean, there are just members of the uh, Republican Party here in Arizona uh, that, that are just silent on this and it's, and it's really frustrating and uh, I mean, Governor Ducey keeps on winning, and I know it's the last one, but, I mean, that, that judge, the federal judge, just ruled that that exponential fitness doesn't have the right to open back up. She, she said that she can't, yeah. uh, she's powerless to just void Ducey's orders. And people are literally starving. People are not working. And, and there's, like, no way to reel them in. And, by the way, you're not the only one. Attorney General Bronovich wanted a federal judge to investigate Ducey. He, Bronovich said he's not even asking our office if what he's doing is legal. He's not even checking with us. Right. You know, and it's not legal. It's not constitutional. And that judge, in my opinion, that judge was uh, issued a really woefully bad opinion. Um, they said two things that really bugged the heck out of me. One is that they have to give incredible deference to a, an executive order by the governor. You show me the constitutional or uh, statutory or case law that supports that, that statement. The other thing was to say that uh, when the, the gym owner said, uh, I'm going to go out of business, I may never be able to open. And the judge says, well, that's, in, that's entirely speculative. Well, wait a second. The governor is saying that uh, closing down gyms is going to provide uh, some massive health benefit to the state. That's speculative. Uh, a business owner is saying, I can't keep people on payroll and pay my overhead if I have no income. That's not speculative. <laughs> you can demonstrate that with the books. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. And what, you know, one more, I got to ask you, and I apologize. I keep saying one more. And I know you're running late. Dr. Scott Atlas, I think is probably the most brilliant yeah. man on this entire issue. And, and his interview he did yesterday on Fox News. I played the sound bites. I'll play him again. I mean, the Trump administration loves TV doctors. Trump loves TV. 
And do you talk to them at all about trying to incorporate the messaging from Scott Atlas to get him out there to explain why schools need to open? I have in the past, and, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I mean, I've interviewed and done a podcast with, with Dr. Atlas. I've done it with Ian Amides. I've done it with uh, people, doctors from all over the country who are experts, who are the contrary view. My opinion is you can't, you can't lock it down because what's happened is we've locked it down with Fauci. Fauci and Burks, you know, um, those two right there, they're the ones driving policy on this nation, nationwide. So Arizona can say, oh, well, we're going to rely on Fauci and Burks. But the bottom line is there is a contrary opinion, and it's not necessarily even a minority opinion. It's, it's, it's a sound opinion that you have got to bring in and have the discussion. I don't care. If you're going to keep Fauci, keep Fauci, fine. But bring in an Atlas, an I uh, some of these other docs that I've interviewed that they are experts. They study this. A lot of them are practicing. I mean, Fauci, is, I mean, so I said this last time somebody wrote in, well, you've never practiced law, uh, medicine either. That's right. But I'm not out there trying to make policy um, demanding that we lock down everything and cre creating additional public health crises. But Fauci does not treat patients, nor does Burks. Let's get some frontline doctors out there to come in and tell their stories and what's happening. Yes. Let's get experts like Atlas to tell their stories. So you can have a debate. I'm all for having the debate. Let's do it. Let's take the numbers and data. And I'm telling you, I'm confident that, that once you parse this thing and you get to the granularity that the numbers that, that are available give us, uh, the policies should change. They should. And it seems to be all politics, though. They want to, like, hold off and keep the economy crushed, parents quitting jobs that stay home with the kids and make it worse just so they can blame Trump and get him out of office. That's what it looks like to me. But uh, Congressman, thank you for uh, the extended time. I apologize if I made you late. I really do. But I think it's vital we talk to someone and we have no leaders, no leaders that are willing to step up and do what you're doing. So we greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks, Garrett. Have a